Right now, Washington Mornings on the Mall. At AM 630. WMAL. 7.37 on WMAL. Brian Eamon and Brian Wilson. Katie McFarland, Fox News National Security Analyst, joins us now. Also host of FoxNews.com's DEF CON 3 show. You can check it out 2 o'clock Wednesdays. That would be today on Live.FoxNews.com. Good morning, KT. Good morning. So let's start off with uh, Senator Dianne Feinstein's comments the other day. Um, She sits on the Senate Intelligence Committee, and here's what she said about uh, the national security leaks. I think the White House has to understand that some of this is coming from its ranks. I don't know specifically where, but I think they have to begin to understand that and do something about it. Now, Mitt Romney used that quote, that statement, in his speech yesterday on national security, and it prompted Senator Feinstein to put out her own statement saying that she did not believe that the president leaked classified information, and I shouldn't have speculated beyond that because the fact of the matter is I don't know the source of the leaks. But Dianne Feinstein doesn't just say that for no reason, right? Yeah, look, come on. If it walks like a duck and it quacks like a duck... And it looks like a duck. It's a duck. And she was right the first time. Now, I think she very carefully said in her retraction that the president, she doesn't believe the president leaked national security documents. I don't think anybody thought the president leaked national security documents. In any way, the president can declassify anything he wants. So by the very fact that the president would talk about it, thereby means the president's declassified it. Um, But that doesn't exempt the fact that people on the campaign where people who were a part of the campaign and prior to that were part of the White House staff might have leaked something, where people who are currently part of the White House staff leaked something. I mean, in every administration I've been part of, it's not even the president so much as the president's loyal aides who want to make the president look like a good guy and a tough guy and a guy that deals courageously right. in difficult situations. Those are the people who do the leaking. What did you think of Mitt Romney's speech yesterday on national security? Um, I thought it was pretty good. I mean, I think he made the right points, certainly about the leaks. He talked about the veterans. Um, I think it's important to make the case to the veterans, to the wounded warriors, to the people that whatever's happening with these cuts in Washington, that we are not going to take away medical benefits, that the people who are coming home with lifelong injuries are not going to be forsaken by their country. And I think he did that pretty well. But did, did he change at all his stance on Afghanistan? Because I know he's been against the timetable, but it did seem to me yesterday that he wants out of Afghanistan by 2014 as well. I think everybody wants out of Afghanistan. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the, again, but the only thing I would have maybe done differently and even more politically is, look, Afghanistan is President Obama's war and he screwed it up, um, bottom line is he said this was a good war, he had the surge, he was going to do this, do that, it was the one that we had to win, and and it's the one that six minutes after we leave, there'll be a civil war. I mean, hopefully it waits until six minutes after we leave. Hopefully that sectarian groups don't start fighting each other as we're trying to leave, and it would make it necessary for us to shoot our way out. Then why should we leave then? I mean, then... Well, why should, you know, here's the problem with Afghanistan. We went in with one mission, and it was to get al-Qaeda, and that was a good mission, and that was justified. And we went in in October of 2001, and by December of 2001, al-Qaeda was down to less than 100, including Osama bin Laden and that group. At that point, they hightailed it across the Tora Bora Mountains into Pakistan. We should have followed them, and we should have killed them. Because if we had done that in December of 2001, look at the problems we've had in the last 10 years. We have now the leading articles in the paper today are about al-Qaeda's back in Iraq. Al-Qaeda's maybe in Syria. What if we had just gone over those Tora Bora Mountains and killed 100 of them? We would have spent the last decade would have been very different. I think if the United States has been attacked, we go into hot pursuit of anybody who's attacked us and we get them. But we don't you know, hesitate at the border, worried about Pakistan, worried about... Go get the guys that got your guys and apologize to the host country later. Yeah. <laughs> Don't ask for permission. Uh, uh, Mitt Romney's headed to Europe today. He's going to the Olympics and for meetings around Europe, and then he's going to Israel and Poland. What do you think needs to happen for this to be a successful trip? What would you recommend? Just being there is great. First of all, the Olympics, by being there, you, it, Mitt Romney reminds everybody that he took the American Olympics, 
that we're going to be a disaster organizationally in every other way, and in lickety split time, turn it around and into a great success just by showing the flag, showing the Mitt Romney flag. He points to one of his greatest successes without having to beat his chest. Going to Poland shows that he's the heir of Ronald Reagan. You know, Poland and all the countries of Eastern Europe, they would still be under the communist yoke if it wasn't for Ronald Reagan. You know, in Poland, half the, I mean, every Polish emigre I've ever met in the United States, most of them are either named Ronald Reagan, you know, Soslowski, or their cousins are. <laughs> Ronald Reagan pulled down the Iron Curtain, and they're going to Poland as a loyal U.S. ally, NATO member, et cetera, et cetera, but it also puts Romney in the camp of being the Ronald Reagan heir. And then going to Israel, I think, makes a lot of sense politically, strategically. Israel, the U.S.-Israeli relationship, I would argue with you right now, and for the next several years, is going to be one of the most, if not the most important relationship the United States has, because that determines what happens to Iran, that determines what happens to the entire Middle East region. All right, so London Olympics, are you convinced that uh, the U.K. has the security situation under control? Well, we'll only know with hindsight, won't we? Um, but, you know, there's no better security, domestic security, um, you know, in the Western world than there is in London. And they obviously know they've got a problem. They know that they've got the Olympics. They certainly pulled off the Queen's Jubilee extremely well. Um, but it's, it is remains the 40th anniversary of the Munich Olympics, where the Black September group killed the Israeli Olympic athletes. So it's it's on everybody's mind certainly the israelis as well as the brits um, and i think that if there's ever going to be the best security available it'll, it'll be there um, will that best security be enough only time will tell all right before we let you go on syria i know president bashar assad um, they caused um, some eyebrows to raise when they vowed to use chemical weapons um, if they were attacked by outsiders um, what does that mean for any possibility of or these, these rebels uh, having some success against the Assad regime? Well, I think the Assad regime, in saying that, they figure they can handle the rebels on their own. But if the rebels get assistance from outside, then they know they're in trouble, and that's why they're making the, the threat of using chemical weapons. The, the key for the United States is, you know, that's a part of the world where they always kill each other. I mean, I'm, I'm less concerned with more civil wars and all the rest. What I'm really concerned with from the United States' immediate point of view is those chemical weapons. If chaos breaks out in Syria and those chemical weapons go missing, like the shoulder-fired missiles went missing in Libya when chaos broke out, then the United States, um, you know, I think it, our security becomes much more endangered than otherwise. That's why it's so important to where are these chemical weapons, who's got them, if if they are not under the control of the Assad government because the Assad government falls, whose control are they under? And at the end of the day, I sure hope we have contingency plans, um, special operations forces, mm. either ours or our friends in the Middle East, to go in there and make sure those chemical weapons do not fall in the hands of al-Qaeda, which we now know is in Syria. All right, Katie, good to have you on as always. We appreciate it. Thank you. Katie McFarland, Fox News National Security.